What's going on, world? Brand new episode of Open the Box there on your screen. I'm your host, George Kill, and I'm here with my guy, Paris, at Soulmates 206. Paris, what's going on, man? What's up, man? Nice to meet you, George. Nice to finally meet you. You have a good store, man. Off camera, I asked you to bring some of your personal collection before we even get into the store, how you started. Let's go over there to that case, man, because I know you got some stuff over there. I don't have the shoe that actually did it for me, which was a Taxi 12. When those dropped, I was going to Mini Middle School. Man, I'm telling you, I'm not no hooper. I, I don't got that athleticism like every other black man in America, right? right, 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 right. But that day, boy, I was hitting every three, <laughs> every shot, you know, because I had on the 12s. It was a culture, it was a vibe. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, you know, I did it for the culture. Culture now is not really culture. But the culture really is who were you dating at the time? Who did you get in a fight with? What school? What was the number one outcast? That was the number one album. You know what I'm saying? I remember all that, you know? So that's culture. But let me show you a couple of my personals. This Atmos Air Max 90, this is hand painted. Man, I've worn this a few times, but I never want to wear it too much because it's kind of hard to get these. This is the friends and family PSG. This is really hard to get. So all the series for me growing up was threes, fours, fives, and then 11s and 12s. I felt like those were the numbers. And of course ones, the bin, at one point I had the whole collection. Man, the shoehorns on this, the attention to detail that they put on these are something special. Even that seal, that stamp, it reminds you kind of like that maker's mark type yep. of, you know how you gotta break that seal to open it? I think I bought this for like 300 bucks. You know, like when they first came out. Yeah, I got number 706 out of 1734. And again, these shoehorns, these are serious. Okay, so this was one of the three that dropped in the 2000s to 2011 range. So this one came out in 2004, right? And of course, this is the Jedi. This is like the Yoda, you know? Yep. This was the one for me. Let's do a quick pause for the cause because we need to uh, take some time to shout out Paris's fit. So of course, you know, I am a Seattle fan and this is King Griffey Jr. Now, I love that they're paying homage to Griffey. He made it into the Hall of Fame with the highest rating. I think it was like 97 point something percent. So King Griffey Jr., he's the GOAT, that's my guy. These are supposed to be, I guess, the Rams colorway, but rumor has it that it was really originally made for the old Mariners uniform colorway. Everyone knows I love gray shoes. Those, those oh, that's just my favorite right, color. Right, so, right. I mean, right, I couldn't help but right. notice that. Right. This is something that I'll probably never let go of. You know what I'm saying? I've done it too many times. I've worn it, sold it, traded it, got it back. Like every time I let it go, it comes back. I have to get it back. I have to. Of course they have the cause for gray pair, then they have the black pair, but now they're supposed to be coming out with another one that's supposed to match this colorway. Gotta have the whole set. These cause fours, you want all of them. I think the quality on the shoe, the quality of the box, the way they put it together, the quality control on the shoe, a lot of shoes have horrible QC. This shoe is high QC all across the board. Let's spin into this, because this kind of ties in. So this backpack, right, is called the Daikayama. This backpack set, I have this one, and then there's like a, a duffel. It's really like a shoulder strap and a fanny pack, because they're really small. I think there was only 100 pieces dropped. Now, I don't know if it was 100 total, or if it was 100 of each, because it only came out in Daikayama Shibuya Tokyo, right? So in 1998, they opened a Supreme store in Daikayama. And so for the 10 year anniversary in 2008, they released these, and then they did a collaboration with Kate Moss, and then they had a cost figure called Bendy that was wrapped around her, right? And so that was Supreme original fake collaboration. So this, it took me a long time to get this set. Like, I mean, probably 15 years. So a lot of people collect Kanye's, right? Which collection of Kanye's, if you had to rank those, the LVs, the Nikes, the Adidas, I mean, even going here, is there a certain line that you put above all of them? Man, the quality on the Kanye West Louis Vuittons is insane. It's crazy, the thickness of the shoe. I wore this shoe probably, I don't know, you know, 40, 50 times. And this, look at, look at it. I mean, this is, this is really good. This is really good. And so the quality of this shoe, I'm gonna have to put this above as far as quality goes, right? But design wise, I'm gonna have to go with the Nike. One or two. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's man, you know, why are you picking on me today, man, you know? So we got the Solar and the Blinks. If I'm going to pick out of these two specifically, I'm gonna go with the Solar. Now, if we're talking Zins, 
Uh, I might go with the Zins. But the Red October, I would pick Red October. So it's more so the colorway. You know what I'm saying? But if I just had to pick a number, I'd probably say the twos overall. And the reason why is because this back piece right here, this back piece, this is the closest I'm gonna ever get to Back to the Future. But this right here, that's a collector's piece. Man, this is a collector's piece. He's really on another level with the art. His mindset when it comes to designing something is very dope. Talk to me about some more SBs before we actually get into the shop. Go here really quickly. The history of the dunk is kind of been like overshadowed because the dunk when it originally came out, you know, it was like the most iconic move in sports was the dunk. So for Nike to call a, a shoe a dunk, they was really capitalizing on that. And they always came out with something dope. But the only thing about it was there was always something that was better than that. Michael Jordan came out with a shoe every single year and he was dominating sports. If he wasn't so great, maybe the dunk would have been better. So it was just kind of like that overlooked relative that was like Janet Jackson. You know, you got Michael over here, you got the Jackson 5, you know what I'm saying? But she's actually talented and really dope. So eventually you can't stop her from shining. That's how I feel like the SBs and the dunks are. Right now they've come back because artists or because Nike is not afraid to allow somebody a budget to put together a dope sneaker. They were actually doing that. When they reached out to Nicky Diamond and they said, man, give us a shoe. And he did the colorways and he did the alligator. Something for the world to see that, man, these skaters are actually willing to pay for a premium sneaker to skate in. And they didn't have something that was their own. When Nike got away from that and stopped putting in budgets into SBs, then that's when it fell off. Let's kind of go over here real quickly. Give me the origin of Soul Mace. What made you want to start a sneaker shop in Seattle? I was always into sneakers and fashion. I used to take my allowance, my $5 a week, and I would save it up. I'd save it up all year round. And then when it came time to go school shopping, you know, we get an outfit, a pair of shoes. You know, it's start off the school year. Well, I would take my money and buy an extra pair of sneakers or a hat or an outfit or something to go with it because I didn't really see the point of running to the store, eating it, and then it's gone. So for me, it was just more of a business aspect and something that I desired. At one point, I kind of stopped buying sneakers. I stopped collecting sneakers because I was at that point where I, I got kids now, and, you know, I can't just keep wasting my money. And you know what I'm saying? What am I doing? You know, after I started taking some inventory of myself and everything I had, I'm like, I'm sitting in a room full of shoes talking about what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I literally had like, a, uh, like 800 to 1,000 valuable sneakers and I'm chasing construction about to be an electrician and all this different stuff but then I was like I had that aha moment you know what I'm saying like why don't you do what you love now when you first said I'm gonna open up a shop you found this place the floor this is unique because I, I haven't seen this at any other shoe shop whenever I'm traveling or whenever I'm out of town I always go to a resale store that's always I, that's always been my thing I just always try to support a store buy something their shirt anything going to different stores you see different type of cultures you go to LA you see their culture you go to New York you go to Soho you see the different type of cultures I said to myself what is my culture you know what I'm saying I'm from Seattle we're in a tourist area. I want to be able to give people directions. So I had this crazy map in my head. What I did was I took Polaroids of these big monumental fixtures of the town. You know, you got the stadium. I got the address. We got the elephant. You got Pike Place Market, the Space Needle. You got the Troll over there, Gasworks Park, the Great Wheel. You know, got my logo. Got the you are here, the I-5, the culture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I really tried to pull in the culture. Speaking of the culture, what is the culture in, in Seattle, the sneaker culture? What do people come in here and buy the most? I would say right now, because of the culture and because of of the sneaker culture is, is, is in its bubble, I would say the Jordan 1s are like the most sought after sneaker. There's multiple Jordan ones that we could talk about right now that came out, set on the shelves, didn't sell out, wasn't going for anything. One year later, they're 800 bucks. If anything, I'm gonna say Jordan one is going to be the number one selling shoe 
especially in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. What kind of clothing do you guys sell in here? Honestly, we have a lot of locals with designing and different things. So definitely want to give a shout out to Bad Clothing. They're doing their thing. Members only. They definitely got a dope brand as well. We have, you know, Stussy. We have Off-White. We have Can't Blame the Youth. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty big right now. People are definitely looking for brands and clothing that are like telling a story and explaining something and, and, and it's meaningful. We definitely got some Supreme TNF. So as you know, the same people that own the North Face, own Supreme, own Timberland, own Vans, you know what I'm saying? So it's all one big brand now. But before that even came to be, they started with a collaboration in 2007. TNF Supreme Summit Series. This jacket and there's one other one that's like tan and purple. These go for like, man, I'm like <laughs> around 10 grand. A lot of these tags, or all of the jackets, from 2009 all the way up to current, they have hologram tags, right? But these ones don't have hologram tags. These ones have this red tag. And so you're gonna see that on this one, you're gonna see that on this one, and you're gonna see that on this one as well. That red tag, you know, it's kind of like polo purple label, you know what I'm saying? So these are the Denali series. All these jackets are pretty dope, but those three, those are my favorite. I'm gonna put you on the spot one more time. In your opinion, pick the five dopest shoes on the wall right now. So I'm going to go the Atmos. So this is the original. Okay. Right, this is the 2007 release. And then we have the, the re-release, which is the 2017, they, they dropped it 10 years later. So this is, this is, <laughs> This is dope. This is probably one of my favorite Air Maxes. So I think this is definitely something that you're not gonna see too much of, but is it's a classic for, for me. I'm gonna go with a metallic five. This sneaker means a lot to me. This is one of my favorite fives all time. Fives in general. I mean, the Will Smith, the Grapes, even Martin Lawrence used to wear Jordans. You know what I'm saying? I remember the one episode where, you know, he took off the sneakers and gave it to the kid. You know, the kid didn't have no for shoes. Christmas. Yeah, for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that type of stuff sticks in my head. Yeah. Fresh Prince took his laces out and he would wear the great fives and he had no laces in them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that's culture. I've always been a huge Kobe fan. We got to pick a Kobe. How people are going with um, Jordans right now, I did that for, for Kobe's. Like I used to go raffle to raffle, mall to mall, first come, first serve, camp out. You know, I, I've done all that for Kobe's, because I'm a huge Kobe fan. Huge right. Kobe fan, I'm telling you. People compare, you know, LeBron to, you know what I'm saying, to Jordan, but you gotta pair him to Kobe first before he makes it to the comparison of Michael Jordan. All right, so this is the PJ Tucker. Now, PJ Tucker is a huge sneaker hit. You know what I'm saying? Not only does he got a good game, you know what I'm saying? He's dope on the court, but he's a sneakerhead and everybody wants to know what PJ Tucker is gonna wear into the game and what he's gonna play in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now his sneaker collection is crazy. I remember in one of the interviews, they asked him like, yo, what's the most exp expensive shoe that you ever bought? He said a KD for 30 bands. I said, bro, yeah. what? There's a KD that's worth money? Yeah. Like, yeah. let alone $30,000, you mean to tell me? Yeah. Like, come on, man. What's valuable to him might not be valuable to anybody else, yeah. but it's valuable to him. So shout out to PJ Tucker. This, this is a dope shoe, you know? I'm not sure how much input he put into this, but I know he did have some input in it. So we done a Jordan, we done an Air Max, we done a Kobe. All right, so Bread Force. Bread Force aren't really hype, right? But it's a classic. I got the first four that dropped in what, 1989, I believe. So this is the Bread Four. This is the most recent release. You know what I'm saying? This is my favorite Jordan. My favorite Jordan number is a four, not a Jordan one. Like, you know what I'm saying? Most people are going to, I'm going with this Bread Four right here. This is a classic, man. Black and red has always been my favorite color combo. When these came out, oh man, it was over. And then I'm gonna go with Jerry Lorenzo. And the reason why I'm going with Jerry Lorenzo, once he made his mind that he was going to do it his way or he wasn't gonna do it, that's when we got the Fear of God one, right? How many brands, how many reselling, how many people are relevant 
that have faith and not only that but what they believe in is in everything they do when he was in the process negotiating with nike this was like a three to five year process it wasn't just like a, okay yeah we're gonna let you do what you want they was not trying to give him creative control like here take this number do what you want and he said no if i'm gonna do if i'm gonna do what i want i gotta bring in my designers i gotta bring in my team and and i need my own shoe you know what i'm saying i need to make something from scratch or we're not gonna do it for him to stick to his guns like you know what i got enough respect for you to just walk away from this deal and not do it some people are gonna get give in to the opportunity, man, it's Nike, let me just get in the door. Nah, he said either we're gonna do it my way or we're not doing it. I got a lot of respect for you guys, you know what I'm saying? But I, I'm, I'm gonna have to respectfully, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully, I'm gonna have to walk away. So I gotta give it to him. And that's a solid five, and I think it kinda encompasses what's all on these walls. So you have a, a nice variety of stuff in this shop. Tell the people that are watching, people that are in Seattle, people that are gonna be traveling to Seattle, where can we find Soulmates 206? Of course, you can find us on all social media platforms. So you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, you know, we're on Twitter, Snapchat, it's all the same, Soulmates 206. Now, as far as the location, we are located on top of the QFC on Pike and Broadway. The address is 1422 Harvard Ave, Seattle, Washington, 98122. We're about maybe 10, 15 minutes away from the airport. So you can get in and you can get out. You know what I'm saying? If you got a layover or your flight's delayed, stop at Soulmates. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and leave the airport and come back.